On October 16, 2023, The Daily Wire, the far-right conservative outfit that plays host to failed writer Ben Shapiro, failed actor Michael Knowles, failed professor Jordan Peterson, and a cadre of other well-known uh, faces in the conservative sphere, introduced Bent Key, a new children's entertainment service. Aimed squarely at the conservative family demographic, the talking heads at Daily Wire have been convincing of Disney's out-of-control wokery and they're coming for your kids, Daily Wire hasn't been shy about their goal with this service, to directly take on Disney. Here's Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring basically saying as much. And today, on the 100th anniversary of the day Walt Disney founded his company, I'm proud to announce the launch of ours. Introducing Bent Key, an entirely new company from the Daily Wire, a company dedicated to creating the next generation of timeless stories that transport kids into a world of adventure, imagination, and joy. The big draw of Bent Key was, in their words, a return to normalcy for children's entertainment. They talked about bringing back Saturday morning cartoons with a variety of additional content and new episodes weekly. Additionally, they assured parents that their kids would be safe from any gender ideology or learning about other cultures. Those familiar with other efforts like the Puddle Twin series might have an image in their heads of a more overt attempt at indoctrination for kids than what's seen on Bent Key. If you're unfamiliar with the Tuttle Twins, go check out Fundy Friday's most recent videos on them because it is a whole nightmare of pure lazy indoctrination. Bent Key is not this. Where something like Tuttle Twins is aimed at a slightly older demographic, Bent Key is firmly aimed at toddlers. But that doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with the content here. In fact, there's plenty wrong with the content Bent Key offers including the fact that an overwhelming majority of content is licensed from outside Bent Key and the Daily Wire and includes things that can easily be seen elsewhere. And they offered this treasure trove of content for a once yearly $100 fee. Yes, I'm serious, there's, there's no other way to access it unless you have the Daily Wire Super Turbo Alpha Plus Game of the Year subscription. So, as you may have guessed, I spent $100 and watched every single episode of every Bent Key original series for the last month. And while mind-numbing deep dives into the heart of modern conservatism is indeed my brand, I didn't feel quite qualified to judge children's content, which is why I reached out to somebody with a background in education, critique, and writing children's content herself, Savvy Writes Books. But before we get into conservatives' latest attempt to teach kids, I need to talk about the app itself because Bent Key across phone, desktop, and tablet has been hands down the worst app experience I've ever had. I've never had a worse time trying to pay $100 for something I didn't even want in the first place. The app is available on tablet and phone, so I downloaded it thinking, like most things with a subscription, I can just buy it through Apple. This is not the case. They want you to register through Bent Key's website or Daily Wire and then log into the app. However, when I went to put in my credit card on the website, it refused to take it on my phone. They don't have anything for PayPal set up, so that was out the window. When I did it on my PC, it took it, but then I got several questions from my bank because the $100 charge set off a fraud warning. But then I couldn't even access the login right away. I got confirmation emails and the money had been spent from my account, yet I couldn't log in and watch any of the content. I turned devices on and off, logged out and back in again, and was simply met with content that refused to load or acknowledge I had paid for the adventure pass. Also, my iPad kept filling in descriptions with literal lorem ipsum when I'd log in. So after about 30 minutes of clicking, refreshing, and resetting, I thought, okay, I'll just call support. Except Benkey doesn't have readily available support. You have to go through the Daily Wire Plus support page, then to the Benkey page, and wouldn't you know it, the Benkey support page doesn't have any of the things I mentioned, just simple things like how to cancel your subscription. So, incensed, I decided to take it to the Daily Wire support, where a chatbot spammed useless help articles to me before an actual agent basically said, it's a whoopsie doodle on their end, and they'd contact me when it gets fixed. Fast forward 24 hours later, I get an email saying the app has some issues, but they should be resolved now. So that was a fucking lie. So I try logging out, logging back in across three different devices, but none of the problems have actually been solved. It took five days for me to get someone to contact me and unlock my account, and even then I had to almost always log out and log back into the account once I got it working. Like, even a month later, if I pop over to another app and then pop back to Bent Key on phone or tablet, 
Adventure Pass content is suddenly restricted. Doesn't matter if I was actually in the middle of watching something that required the Adventure Pass. Oh, and there's no real security on the app for kids to bypass. You can pretty much enter any four digit number that starts with 19 for the year you were born. And even if it's different every time, you'll still get right in. Oh, and this app has no recording control. Like you can just record everything on a phone or tablet and keep and distribute the episodes of HD if you wanted. Most apps like Netflix, HBO, and anyone else have managed to stop this kind of thing. So that's the user experience out of the way. Let's get to the actual content. Like I mentioned before, if you haven't seen Savvy's video before this one, go, go watch it now. What are you doing here? Come back, go watch it, come back, and then start this one. I'll, I'll still be here, I promise. If you have, then let's jump right in where we were talking about Kid Fit Go, the Bent Key Kids Fitness Show. And the thing with Kid Fit Go is that I feel like we like to, to go back to what you were saying about homeschooling. I think Kid Fit Go is the clearest indication that they, they want this service like aimed at homeschoolers because it really is. It might be their worst show, uh, <laughs> I think, because I don't know if you've watched any episodes of it. But I've it, watched a few. I watched them on double speed because it's so good. Yes. boring. Which it, it's it's <laughs> meant to be just like a fitness like routine and regimen for kids. But the way that they do like branding in it, like they continually say like kid fit go like constantly. They're like, and that's how you kid fit go. And I'm like, it that really gets on my nerves. Off the bat, the weird thing about kid fit go is that despite being one of only five bent key originals the service is using to justify the exorbitant hundred dollar price tag it isn't actually original to bent key kid fit go is a show from a small edutainment channel called kid explorer i wasn't able to find out much about kid explorer but the youtube channel only has twenty five thousand subs as of writing despite being active for over four years the production quality is adequate but with such low views i don't think the daily wire had to shell out a lot of money to get the kid explorer brand under their umbrella Oddly, the most recent video on the Kid Explorer channel promises a new season of content, including Biz Kid, a show aimed at promoting young entrepreneurship. The new season trailer is from November 2022. I have no proof, but if I had to guess, I'd say this was before Daily Wire signed an exclusivity deal with them, and the trailer was just never taken down. For all that's worth, because among the exclusive content, Ben Key has uploaded old YouTube episodes of Kid Explorer and locked it behind the Adventure Pass. That episode, by the way, still available for free on YouTube, but it's here behind a $100 service. Anyway, let's get right into Kid Fit Go, something I'm still not sure has any reason to exist. It's this weird, like it feels like workout routines, like as a substitute for homeschoolers gym class, maybe? Like, like you something like that. You might be onto something with that because I was watching it this morning and it's basically like I watch a lot of fitness channels on YouTube and a lot of workout channels and I'll watch videos that are like, here's a, a, a 30 minute cardio workout you can do. This video is just the this show whole show is just that but for kids. And there are so many videos that are completely free on YouTube that show you the exact same workout routines like do some jumping jacks, do some push-ups, do some squats. <laughs> like, okay, 30 seconds on for your squats, 30 seconds of rest, 30 seconds more of squats, 30 seconds of rest. There, There's countless channels. Like I, I watch a bunch of channels that do exactly that or that do that, but like also introduce dumbbells, which like, yeah, maybe for kids, you're not going to get as complex with that, especially considering that the target demographic of this is basically elementary school. This is not much older than that. So yeah, I don't really see the point in this being on a paid service when there are countless fitness channels that are going to show you the exact same workouts or just like a slight variation of them. Well, and I, I think it's, I really think, because even in the the like studio that they used to film that, they have Kid Explorer logos in the background. That's because yeah. this, is, this is made by the same, I guess, I guess it's a family uh, production team that makes the kid explorer show which was a youtube show originally and so yeah. i think that really it was just more of a package deal than anything else um yeah it's it's a very odd like there's no 
story, there's no narrative. And I think even the kind of like target demographic of it is skewed because it's, again, like everything else, it's kind of meant to be, or it, it seems like it's aimed towards younger kids, but the kids it's featuring are like maybe slightly older, like teenagers to preteens. Yeah. And this is definitely targeted at like the elementary school crowd. Uh -huh. And part of me is thinking like, okay. I like the idea of, like, getting kids excited about fitness and, like, thinking fitness is fun and, like, but it, I, the only kids I could see watching this are, like you said, kids who don't have gym class at school because the stuff you're doing in these are not any different from that. Like, it's, it's so boring and baseline and there's no, like, I feel like it's a huge missed opportunity to, like, bring in concepts like imagination and games you can play. And, yes. like, and they, they have one episode that's kind of like, it's like, oh, you know, like, here's, let's do an exercise. It's kind of like uh, swinging around lightsabers. But that is such a small portion of this show. And the rest of it is just like, okay, now we're going to do five squats. And then we're going to do 20 crunches. And it's just like, it's it's just running those same boring reps that everybody hated in high school. and elementary school that's what doesn't class. make sense about this this show it doesn't feel like it was actually made with kids in mind like this is an adult workout channel video or like an adult workout channel type of show but they just have kids doing the workouts exactly they just cast kids instead featuring the same caleb kid from kid adventures and even having a brand logo in the back there's nothing about the workouts like sure like n none of them are like using heavy weights or anything that would be dangerous for kids but like none of it's not adapted in any kind of way that's specifically going to get kids interested in it like i think that when you when you have kids and you want to get them excited about fitness the normal ways to do that are through having them want to join a team sport or like having them like i know when i was a kid when i was in middle school the biggest thing was learning all the dance moves from the napoleon dynamite dance at the end that was a big thing for for all the kids who went to middle school in in the early 2000s that was a thing um or uh i don't know like the lightsaber thing sounded like it could be getting at something if the whole channel were things like that like oh we make being active fun because here's a game here's a sport or like here's a, a martial arts tutorial like kids all think it's cool to learn karate and things oh, like yeah. that there's none of that it's just like here's the same workout routine that your parents would be doing at the actual gym that's that's gonna be boring as hell. I know, and that's I that's the, the only thing I could. I I really I try to approach <laughs> all of these things because like I'm I am obviously not the target audience. Yeah, but I tried to approach most of these shows through the lens of like, would a kid find this interesting? Would I recommend this to a kid? And Kid Fit Go was the only one that I was like, I I don't know who this is for because like I don't think like teenagers would scoff at this. Preteens probably have other things that they would like to watch. Kids would think it's boring. Like. I, I don't know who this is specifically made for other than parents who want to put something on in lieu of uh, like a, a gym class if they homeschool. Right. That's literally the only use I can see for it, because if you have kids who are already like, yeah, I do want to I do like to be active. You're probably already having those kids play sports. You're probably already like or at least like taking them to the park to run around or something. And if you have kids who just naturally don't like to be active, who are more into sedentary hobbies, and you want them to get excited about fitness, this show is not going to get them excited about fitness because this show is showing them the most, like, boring exercise. And I, I say this as someone who goes to the gym to squat multiple times a week and stuff. As a kid, I would have found this boring as hell because it's it's not appealing in any way. Like... No, like this, there's there's nothing cool about it. I think like you were, you were on to smaller humans. This is smaller humans doing, doing the same, the same thing. cardio yeah. workout videos that I would do at home in the evening, but like they're being done by kids. I just I don't I don't see what the benefit of this is at all. Next up, we talked a little bit about Kid Explorer, a Daily Wire funded extension of the same edutainment channel, starring a young Sheldon stunt double who simply talks at kids and a constant stream of factoids about a subject. While the show is called Kid Explorer, the name Kid Explorer is actually a brand umbrella of sorts, encompassing Kid Fit Go and Kid History, which is what this same series was called when it used to be on YouTube. I watched one episode, I think, because I wanted to see if it was political at all. And it was the one about um, Dreams of Liberty, the founding of the United States, which 
It was a pretty short episode. I've got to say, there are a few things I like about Kid Explorer that I will give them. So I will say the show as a whole, like, I think the set is cute. I think the editing's cute. But like you were mentioning, it came from a YouTube channel that Daily Wire then funded, which it definitely looks like that. It looks like a show that came from a YouTube channel that eventually got a budget, which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? Like, kids like YouTube shows. They like shows that you find on the internet. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and I don't think the idea, like, I think making kids content about teaching history is good. I also like that. You, everybody knows that I am obsessed with the American Girl dolls, or if you didn't know that, you can see it in my office all around me. All I have is, I'm actually working on a big video essay right now all about, like, the political history surrounding the American Girl dolls and their stories and, like, all of that. But that's just to say that, like, stuff like that really gets kids excited about learning history when it's presented to them in a way that they can relate to with somebody that they can relate to. Um, so I watched this episode, um, Dreams of Liberty, the Founding of the United States, and I... I don't want to, like, say, oh, this is just so much conservative indoctrination, because if I'm being, like, totally honest, I watch it, and it was the basically the same exact thing that I was taught in elementary it's, school. It's very... It's, it's, it's like to the notes. point. It's like yeah. cliff notes of, like, what my history textbook said when I was in third grade or whatever. Oh, they didn't like that there was a king in England and they didn't, they wanted to, they, they moved over here and then they didn't like the taxation without representation and, and then they elected a president. Like it's, it's, it's the same, it's the basic overview that you get from that. So I don't think it's necessarily teaching any new information. I'm guessing it's kind of trying to combat the whole, like, they think that teaching American history as like, not just solely something beautiful is now critical theory or whatever, which is not true. That's not what critical theory means. But like, there's this whole, there's this whole moral panic out there right now about, oh, if we let our kids learn that like the founding of the US involved some bad things happening, like stealing people's land that already were here. Or if we learn that like slavery was still allowed for a decent chunk of time after the United States happened and we teach the realities of that, now that's critical theory, which I don't understand how there's a connection between calling that critical theory, but like they are, they're suddenly like, oh, okay, this is political now, which well, is also in a way it's political not to teach that too. Like exactly. it's exactly everything's inherently political. If you're going, if you're teaching history, history is political by nature. Like there's no way around that. Well, and I think this gets at like, there are, there are a couple more like talking points and it, it might just be my, my paranoia that rang alarm bells. And it would be things like the way they talked about um, taxes and the way they talked about the government shouldn't overstep Taxation its bounds. Taxation is and, theft, okay? You didn't like, know. And they they did a whole, like, I, I think it was like an animatic sequence about a lemonade stand. So they they really just yeah, narrowed it down. It's like, it's like exactly. my friends, it the is, Tuttle Twins, it like is their, the, their neighbor who's obsessed with Frederick Bastiat would teach us that taxation is theft. It's all inherently plunder. <laughs> It and and it it takes that it, it like it reduces this thing that is much more complicated than that to these really like these talking points that I feel would be familiar to like most libertarians and most like uh, conservatives. And I I wasn't specifically like saying, hey kids, the government is evil, but the way that it like kind of morphed these talking points uh, felt. I don't know. It felt like it was it was trying to like plant some seeds. And then yeah. th also the way that it like there was like a Bioshock infinite level of founding father dick writing in this. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I just I love whenever I watch like conservative leading fiction wherever you can point out the Bioshock references. <laughs> And it, well, it really is but like, like parallels, like where it, you can make that because they were, they're just depicting these people as like these flawless paradigms of justice and, and liberty. And it's like, like, like kids learning stuff like that and growing up their whole life, believing that, oh my gosh, Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson were these just unimpeachable, brilliant minds of politics yeah. and freedom is the reason why people have such a, a steadfast reaction to like CRT and learning the real history yeah. behind these people. And it's just, there, there's so many things about it where you're right. It, it definitely, it's giving these very broad strokes, but not touching on things I still think are like really important uh, to, in, to just like 
the founding of the country and the the way that we know it today. Instead, they they there are a couple like Michael Bay shots of like you know flags against a sunset and talking about how we live in the the greatest nation on earth and and because we got we got commerce and capitalism and anybody can be anything they want. It's it's the same kind of thing that like I I remember hearing about and like. Oh. Huh. We were and all taught still, this. It's not unique to this channel. This no, is not we at all. It, it is growing up. Yeah. Like it is in so many ways. It is a very broad or like at least broadly acceptable understanding of, of history for kids. But just like, I don't know, maybe it's just that I'm older and more cynical now. But the way it was just hammered uh, just felt kind of felt like there was like you could you could feel the, the agenda poking through just a little bit more. Oh, definitely. Like, well, even when we were in school, like as kids, I don't know how old you are. I just assume everyone's the same age as me by default. Um, I'm 31. So I, <laughs> I don't know. But when I was in school, it was always like Christopher Columbus discovered that the earth was round. Everybody in Europe thought the earth was flat. And Christopher Columbus thought, what if it's round? And then, like they taught us like weird shit like that constantly. And this video felt like more of that like it did as far as i could see it didn't have any blatant historical inaccuracies in it but it was oversimplified to the point of like america is great didn't you know that it's great and again i i don't want to come across as like someone who thinks that like it's too cringe to like the country that you live in or anything like that i'm not i'm not here for that but i think there's a difference between kids learning to appreciate what they have and appreciate the place that they live and understand the history, but also teaching kids that history is messy, that the things that happen in history are, are not like yeah. there's good guys and bad guys and the good guys win and the bad guys lose. Like history is not a superhero movie in, in, in real life history. There are people who have made accomplishments that are still things that we use today, that it's good that they made that accomplishment but they were also bad people in other ways and hurt other people in ways that we should not follow. And we should not have this like blind idolization of historical figures. I think that's doing a disservice to kids. Oh, but absolutely. That might, and I, that I think might it's... be too complex for what this, what this is aiming to do. I don't know. And I, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think it, the problem with teaching history is that in, in such a simple way, I think it again, disservices kids intelligence and their ability to understand more complicated issues but it's being presented instead of being in a narrative or in, you know, fiction where they might just be disinterested. It is teaching it as fact, as as yeah. that is the way to understand it, which is its own kind of issue and discussion. But did you also notice um, how the kid shoots a gun and it's heavily implied he kills a British troop? Uh, I don't even remember that. Hold on. I need to go look back through the episode. It's only nine minutes long. I will. I. Right, there's a up. there's a moment where Cal is dressed in uh in colonial regalia and I believe it's talking about the the battle of Lex Lexington and Concord. Yeah, and I remember them him... talking about that. I may have been like set, I was setting up the Zoom call while I it's watched totally it. It's totally okay. The He's the it's time. the most crazy cut because it's not necessarily showing it, but it is showing him firing a gun and then the very next shot and it's the craziest thing to show a child. Oh doing. my god. I just found it. Am, am I right? This kid looks, he looks feral, dude. This is nothing against the actual child. He's a child. But like the look they're having him portray on his face while he holds the gun. He looks like, like ready for blood. Oh my God. And then the very next shot is like, after he fires off a round is a troop falling. Oh my god, I'm gonna need to screen record this. <laughs> oh my god. Right? Wait, Am I right? Okay, so he says, he says, the fight for, I got the subtitles, he's like staring at the camera, pointing his gun at, at, at somewhere slightly off screen, not at you and me directly, somewhere slightly off screen, and his face is like this, and he says, the fight for American freedom was on, and then he fires the gun, and then some, some explosions happen, and some soldiers die. <laughs> That, uh, no, I didn't even remember that, but <laughs> I, I guess like, again, oh, you're muted. Oh, sorry. They don't do a lot of cutaways like that, which is why it stood out to me. Like they don't have like these sets and him dressing up in costume a lot. And it was just like, it, it was so bizarre. I don't, I don't know. There's something about it that I was like, this, I, 
this is an odd choice. I think what's weird about it is that it's just lacking all context. Like, if you were trying to do something that's like, okay, kids, this is, if you have him regularly historically reenacting things, if you have him in costume throughout this doing things like that, maybe, but that was the one shot. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think we need that many more kids growing up thinking guns are cool, but maybe that's just me being old and not cool anymore. I don't know. Well, and on on the subject of things that aren't that cool, uh the other like pretty I wouldn't say it's political, but the way they don't talk about things definitely feels like an agenda is their episode on the industrial revolution, which like even as a kid, I remember when I learned about the Industrial Revolution, it was talked about in you know acceptable terms for kids, but things like workers' rights and strikes and how uh, it, it's the kind of like trivia that kids love learning is like, oh, did you know that like kids used to have to get into like machines and they might lose their arms or something? It's like it's that weird stuff that kids uh, like. You know learning. where I learned that was from Samantha, the American Girl doll. Samantha taught me all about the workers' rights movement back in 1906 when she was or 1904, I think, when she was a little kid and she made this friend named Nellie and Nellie's uh dad i think died of like yellow fever or something maybe with scarlet fever they're all the, all the kids and their friends and their parents are always dying of like cholera and dysentery and yellow fever in all these books because they're they're real right so samantha her friend nelly is an orphan and nelly is from a poor family so she ends up having to go to an orphanage and at the orphanage they put her to work in a factory and she goes in to try to learn all about the in, in the movie adaptation I, I don't remember if it's in the books or just the movie adaptation or one or the other but she sees a kid's like finger get jammed in a huh. machine when she's in there and uh she joins the uh the movement for workers rights and makes a speech at her like prep school all about it and that's how samantha becomes an ally so we so, we love samantha anyway i'm saying that samantha the american girl doll was willing to teach me all about that and i i wish that cal was as willing because the whole episode on the industrial revolution basically starts about and it's it you know these kind of broad factoids are totally fine for kids to to learn about and, and take away and go tell their parents, hey, did you know this, that, and the other? Which is kind of the point of this show, I feel, is to just give these like Cliff Notes versions with things that kids can remember. But it's all about, the, the first half of the episode is just about how hard farming was and how hard agrarian society was before the, the steam engine and before the Industrial Revolution. And then the last half is literally just all about how great the Industrial Revolution made life and how awesome everything was once we had it and how much technology advanced. And that, I I feel like, and I was, I acknowledge I was a very morbid child, um, but like I was very interested in learning about the side effects of the industrial revolution, things like the tanneries, things like the the things that you would read and uh, like Marx and Engels when they went to London and saw like the awful spilling out into the streets and people just basically living in refuse under under factories because everything was built up so quickly that people had nowhere else to go. And it like horrible, horrible conditions. But I feel like you can still talk about those things and talk about the workers' rights movement and like, you know, talk, approach subjects like that, that set the basis for kids to know about why rights are important and why workers' rights are important because business owners had Pinkerton's like shelling camps of people and like like there there are important aspects that are completely skated over as this episode in particular makes just everything look super cool after the industrial revolution yeah and i i will say like for the fact that like you can compare this to what we learned in school as kids like even in school we did learn about the things that happened after the industrial revolution because if you're just looking at history as like something was bad and then we solved it and then it was better the end it's like okay well what happened after something was better because this is history this isn't just like a complete fiction story that and then they lived happily ever after we're here in the world right now so things happened in the years in between what happened next and i if think you it's... Do, if you're not willing to cover that then it's kind of a disservice to to teaching history in general yeah well and i think that's uh, like it, going back to i think it it this kind of education, this very thin, very narrow view of events where, like you were saying, something bad happens, we solved it, that's the end of the story. Right, yeah. It does, it's the reason why I think so many people, just at least personally, 
are hesitant and reticent to acknowledge things like structural racism and yeah. uh, how things like segregation and Jim Crow and all these racist institutions that like built up a large portion of society up to a certain point have still affected people generationally, how how disparities yeah. in wealth and education across all demographics have affected people generationally. Um, and I think like it's it's teaching like this that keeps those more progressive ideas in education at bay. And I think that is like ultimately the goal of things like the Daily Wire and and their whole, you know, trying to get into kids education or kids entertainment, at least. I could say if maybe if the Industrial Revolution, which I guess it is, Industrial Revolution is the second to last episode available as of right now, with the only other one after that being like the re-upload from the YouTube channel about uh, Veterans Day. So I don't know what's coming next as of right now while we're filming this. But theoretically, if the Industrial Revolution one were like part one of part two, and then in part two, they say, okay, now here's what happened directly after the Industrial Revolution. Like, I can see the idea of like, okay, we're going to focus this video just on teaching you about the new machines that were made, what was life was like before. But if you're presenting it solely as like the complete story is farming was really hard. And then we got machines and then farming was less hard and life was better. And that's the whole story you're telling. That that, that doesn't seem quite right, especially uh, if it's presenting things as like certain things were bad and other things were good. That's also just a disservice to kids. Critical thinking in general is you you shouldn't necessarily be teaching history as like this was we're going to show all good things over here and all bad things over here. That's that's very clearly biased in your telling of it. And then that makes your material political by nature because you are choosing what to keep and what to leave out. So it kind of goes against the not letting children's content be political mission in that sense. But I guess I don't know what's coming next. So one small aside about Kid Explorer. As this bent key iteration is essentially an extension of the Kid History YouTube series, I went back to that trailer from November 2022 that promised a new season to compare the advertisement with what got delivered for the Daily Wire. The trailer shows off the Founding Fathers, which they did a whole episode about, but also other historical figures that are strangely absent from the Daily Wire's slate, at least so far. More episodes are on the way, but despite ostensibly planning Kid History episodes for them from this trailer, there's nothing for Jackie Robinson or Booker T. Washington. Hmm. The fact that Kid Explorer makes up two of the five exclusive shows for the Daily Wire's new platform is interesting. It's a small brand that never seemed to have taken off in any substantial way, despite offering courses parents and educators can buy to teach kids about things like economics and political structures. When you throw in Gus Plus Us and Mabel McClay, also licensed content not originally created by the Daily Wire, it paints a picture of Bent Key as an outlet that is less ready to go up against Disney then it exists as a PR move by a culture war obsessed company. I don't know if I would say I'm waiting with bated breath. I think if if anything, you know, deeply problematic or deeply political comes out, I will probably do like an additional discussion of it. But I think sure. I've I've looked at so much of it and I think like and th there's good stuff in Mabel McClay. There's good stuff in Gus Plus Us, but it is such it's the the diamonds are few and far between on this service and it has so many other things working against it from mm. the way that the historical content is angled to the lack of original content to the original content that is there kind of just being knockoffs of other things like it, i i don't see any reason for for parents to go after this unless it is to just literally support an ideological agenda and and i feel like that would be a real shame to to put some of this stuff on your kids. Cause it's just like, it's like we were saying with kid fit go and even these kid explore videos, like you can't get these specific ones on YouTube. You can get likewise videos. There's, there's no shortage of historical videos from the history channel and all sorts of other places that discuss these things in depth. And I'm sure even in ways that kids can understand. So like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It, it just almost every, different video or every series when I got done watching it just brought me back to the question of like who is this for like who who is going to be repping this in like a year who is who is going to be making up the base of this in a year and I think it my again my own little conspiratorial heart of hearts 
I think that's the reason why you have to do a hundred dollar buy-in for an entire year. Because I think most parents, if they paid, you know, like six to fifteen dollars a month for this, would peace out after the first month because they're like, eh, I'll just because like, there's make- not that much there. Uh-huh. Like if you're looking at this compared to like Netflix or something where Netflix, I haven't had my own Netflix account in a long time, but Netflix is like fifteen dollars a month, right? Yeah, so something like, something like that. And there's there's a lot on there. Like whether or not you like the shows on Netflix is irrelevant. There are a lot of shows. There are a lot of movies. There are a lot of like little known weird things. There's a lot of original stuff. This doesn't I mean, have they, that like, much for the price they're charging. Yeah, and Netflix has like a thousand seasons of Coco Melon. That's why Coco Melon is always the number one watch show in America. And that's the other thing is I'm thinking. When when you have this content for kids and the way that I've seen family members and people who I know who have kids do it, where they sit down with a tablet and they'll watch their shows, is that they generally watch the same things over and over because that you know kids like what they like. That's fine. But there's just so little here to watch. Like even, right. even if your kid ends up loving, again, I literally almost said Bluey, even if <laughs> your kid ends up loving Chip Chilla, like you are watching, you can blow through those episodes in like what two hours, maybe. They're so short. And like, yeah, there's there's multiple shows on here that I thought were were kind of cute. Like I might go through and just watch all of Runes at some point on this because it looks kind of good. And I liked Mabel McClay. I thought that show was good. I think Clangers is awesome. I think that show is so cool. But these are all shows that were not produced by the Daily Wire, which is why they just own the rights to it. So let's say you bought a subscription to this service. They, they may trade the rights back to, to the owner. The, they might sell the rights to Netflix to those specific shows, things like that. So yeah, there's a lot of shows on here that I think are pretty good. But they're not the shows that are produced by the Daily Wire. The shows that are actually Daily Wire originally funded and produced, like Chip Chilla, Kid Fit Go, Kid Explorer, are easily the worst shows on on this on this platform in general. And, even and if, if this is the quality that they're making, other than them just buying rights to other things, I can't see I can't see the stuff that they're making being very promising in the future, which is again why, okay, if you bought in for a full year at once and then the good stuff goes away i don't have faith that the that the stuff they're making is necessarily going to be no and i really i don't know how they you know talking about all the issues with the app and just the user interface and all these very simple i mean not simple to solve i'm sure on a back end but like these these basic tenets of how you want to launch a service and a product and that they've kind of bungled in various ways you combine that with a really high bar to entry and then just a lack of good content. I don't see how this, I certainly don't see how this is like their answer to Disney. Um, oh, and I not at really, all. I really they, don't see how this goes on for like have, years. They don't even have a full I don't think they have a movie, movie on there. No. Other than they have Snow White coming next year, which does based on the trailer does not look good. It is, um, I didn't realize, I forgot the girl who is cast in it. Oh, uh, it's Brett Cooper. Yes, who Dude, I she did looks not... like she could be Ben Shapiro's twin. She, like it is uncanny. Th- it's weird. And then if you watch her talk, she talks like him. They have a similar voice. They have a similar like she doesn't talk quite as fast as him, but she. You it's know, it's she's, the cadence. It's, like it's very yeah. yeah. No, it's they're it's very. Bizarre. I was like, there's no way this has got to be his sister or like his cousin or his niece or something. And she's not there. She's just like, no, I didn't even notice we looked similar. I, are you she's serious? Just, she just happens to be another one. Um, she just happens to look like Ben Shapiro and act like him. Well, and she's, <laughs> Although she's I also... do give her credit for the fact that she understood the Barbie movie a lot better than Ben Shapiro did. So I'll give her that at least. Well, and she's got her meal ticket made right now because she also is in a starring role in their The Daily Wire they're like Game of Thrones-ish production, The Pendragon Cycle, which is their like fantasy live action series that they're shooting, I think, for next year. Um, I'll be real. I feel kind of bad for her because she's 21 years old. Yeah. She's uh, 21 years old and is already locked into multiple contracts with the Daily Wire. And that was her choice. She's an adult. She can make that choice. But I just think of myself at 21. I would have done some stupid things to, to get work in my field, especially in a field like acting which is not an easy field to break into, especially when you're just out of college and things like that. So I I feel a little bad for her that this is... Although maybe one day, maybe one day she'll leave this behind and go on to better things. I don't know. I don't know the kind of person she actually is. I think she's playing a character on screen, so I don't really know. 
Uh, I could I could definitely see that. Yeah, I I don't know her as a person at all, but uh, the Snow White doesn't look good. She's in what's their Game of Thrones thing that they're working on? The Pendragon Cycle. I believe it is a, a adaptation of a book series. So yeah, overall, I guess if your kids are homeschooled and really you re- you don't pay for any other streaming service and you're lacking in anything, some of the shows on here are pretty good. Yeah, I can't really see any utility for it, like out, out, unless you literally have no other option. Like almost everything here, sorry, dog noises. Almost everything here, you can get better elsewhere and and the things that you can only get here i do not think are are like good enough to be like worth the purchase and the difficulty of of everything around it with how bad the app is and how annoying the website is and how little stuff there is the shows that are good here are absolutely not worth paying a hundred dollars a year especially because the good shows are the ones they didn't produce so you don't know if they're going to sell the rights to someone else and change hands in a, a few months to a year or a year or two like i don't know what their contracts say um, but I hope a lot of these shows find a better home in the future because man, Clangers deserves better than this. It really does. Justice for Clangers. Justice for Clangers and for Mabel <laughs> McClay, who is going to I really yeah, Mabel- I really like it's it's she's such a sweet, like the the actress really just embodies that like Mr. Rogers sweetness in a really nice she's way. She's gonna be the she's gonna be the next generation's queer awakening, the way Miss Frizzle was for us, dude. For real. <laughs> And I, I feel like by saying that, Ben Shapiro is going to go feral and be like, oh, no, we need to get rid of Mabel McClay now. <laughs> but, but dude, I'm just saying she's got that. She's got that energy. I, I love her. And I think that pretty much sums up our thoughts on Bent Key and the Daily Wire slate of children's content. I maintain that Mabel McClay and Gus Plus Us have some strong production value and are overall fine shows for young kiddos, but like I mentioned here and in Savvy's video, the rest of the content in this service is either a knockoff of something you can get elsewhere or just not worth subjecting kids to. Ben Key's content isn't as blatantly political as some other kid-focused conservative propaganda, but that doesn't mean the service is good, especially when parents have so many other options at their disposal for a far cheaper buy-in than the $100 upfront Bent Key requires. Despite the upcoming promise of a Mabel McClay Christmas special and a feature film in 2024, Bent Key already feels stagnant. Even those Kid Explorer episode uploads have slowed, which is why I think they re-uploaded an episode from a YouTube channel from four years ago. There might be enough here for kids to spend a few hours on, but the overall breadth of content is aimed at the youngest possible demographic, so I don't see anyone else but toddlers having their attention held for long. So I have to ask, who's this for? The exorbitant price and year-long buy-in feels like a preemptive strike against parents who would sub for one month, notice their kid got bored, and want to unsubscribe. The original content lineup is sparse, yet thematically scattered. Bent Key doesn't feel like a consistent brand like Nickelodeon or Disney or Cartoon Network. It feels like a ramshackle attempt by terminally online conservatives like Jeremy Boring to spend a ton of money just to prove we can do whatever the Wokies can do. A kind of virtue signal, if you will. And the result is, perhaps unsurprisingly, a product that doesn't appear to be for anyone except the parents and grandparents who buy into the culture war paranoia and wokeness scares the Daily Wire likes to propagate. As a result, I kind of feel for the kids who will be inevitably subjected to this as their only media diet. But... Then again, it's not like the Daily Wire has ever cared about what kids want in the past. I've, let me tell you something. I violate my kids' consent all the time in the sense that I force them to do things they don't want to do. I violate my kids' consent all the time. Hello, darlings, and thank you for watching. First off, I want to thank the amazing Savvy Writes Books for tag teaming this with me. I've been promising a video on Bent Key since it dropped, and I hope it's been worth the wait because I've been so excited to share this with everyone. On that note, if you're not yet, please go sub to Savvy's channel and check out her wonderful merch, clothing, and Instagram. And to show for a bit of myself, if you enjoy my work here and the content I create, please consider giving a few bucks to the Patreon or just donate at any of the links below. I do this as a full-time job, and those Bent Key memberships don't don't come free. They're $100. 
I, I wish I could say it's well spent, but you just sat through the broad strokes, you know how it went. All of that said, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you stay tuned as I have a bunch of great content coming soon, and I hope you don't miss out. As always, I will see you next time, and hope you have a wonderful day.